for another episode of the Cozy Corner of Cinema. This is being recorded on Sunday, April 7th, 2024 at 3.41 p.m. This is episode number 106. Here we are. It's a beautiful day outside. The sun is out. You can see the shadows of the trees laying across the open road. You can hear the birds outside eating the bird food and squirrels running around, man. Make sure when you're driving, you keep an eye out on that. You don't be running over to squirrels, man. That wouldn't be cool. they got places to go, people to see, you know, things to do, as we all do. We don't want to be, we don't want to be interrupted in our, in our uh, daily, uh, daily tasks at hand. But, uh, yeah, no, I hope you guys have been doing well lately. Hope you've been focusing and being consistent with whatever it is you need to get done. Your hopes and dreams, your... Goals for the future, your artistic endeavors, if you're working on your film or you're working on your book or your album or your painting or um, anything of the sort, I hope you're just keeping a maintained uh, consistency at it. You don't want to fall too behind on it and then try to catch up. You know, I've been guilty of that myself, so it's uh, good to have just at least some sort of uh, maintained sort of uh, flow with it, but it is all subjective as to how you do the work, what amount of time you put into it. It's all subjective to get the best results overall in the long run. But uh, you just got to keep on working on working it. Uh, you know, you snowball into it. And at first it's a little snowball, and then it becomes just a great big boulder, man. And it's just like, you know, you don't make a snowman with, uh, with like, you know, little pieces of snow. You got to put them all together to get, you know, the snowman, of course. But, uh, yeah, man. So, uh, I think I mentioned the last time that Kino sale was still going on. I should probably actually look at when that, uh, when that ends because I haven't picked up anything from the sale yet i'll probably cap it off at about 50 or maybe 100 bucks or so depending on what they have um but i see that indicator having their sale starting tomorrow uh which is great indicators sales are, are almost always great i mean they have really solid prices and nine times out of ten they have the strongest uh, releases for a lot of these um films a lot of films that uh don't at the time don't have a domestic kind of blu-rays they're they're always doing really just top-notch work um so like with this with the uh, paul schrader stuff of uh, blue collar and um hardcore those eventually got um blu-ray releases from kino lorber um i have the indicator blu-ray of, of blue collar and that's such a great release i, I love their releases was, you know they're, they're one of the top companies going right now i mean you know everybody uh everybody knows how great they are but it's you know especially with their box sets with their packaging uh, you know i was talking about a while ago that um their blu-ray of irreversible uh, which is one of the best releases that I have, and that eventually got released in the States as well from one of the OCN uh, partner labels, um, who I can't remember which one, but, um, and I didn't pick up that release for obvious reasons. If I already have the, uh, you know, if I already have the Region 2 Blu-ray, then there's got to be a real reason to actually go and pick it up. And there wasn't in this case. But that indicator release, which is so fantastic, so just keep an eye out on that. The shipping prices, I know, are, are pretty fair. I've ordered a handful of stuff from uh, direct from their website in the past, um, and of course, it's shipping internationally, so sometimes it can be kind of tricky. Uh, I know a lot of companies will just charge uh, really wild prices for uh, international shipping because it's just so difficult to do that. So uh, typically, I have some um, acquaintances overseas, and then what I'll often do is just have them mail it to me, and then I'll just mail it out to them, um, and I'll usually just uh, take the, uh, I'll just take the, uh, um, the cost, uh, uh, with it. So, you know, they don't get charged crazy prices to, to ship it overseas. Um, it's usually not even that bad nine times out of 10. It's, it's a pretty fair price for, for what we're doing. I, I did have to mail something a little while ago to an acquaintance of mine over, <clears throat> over in Finland. And I had to rebox that thing like a couple of times because it was just, uh, you know, trying to get the, the cheapest that I could to get it overseas. And it was, uh, it was definitely uh, expensive, but you know, uh, where, you know, you get money, you lose money. Money is important, but um, you can't live your whole life around it, man. It's sort of like you, you're gonna get more money, you're gonna lose money, you're gonna make bad investments, you're gonna make good investments. You know, you're gonna you're gonna spend money on things that you, you in retrospect, you go, oh my gosh, why did I spend money on that? And there's other times you're gonna be spending money on things like food or uh, you know, uh, art or anything like that that really kind of enriches your life and and uh, overall is just a, an improvement in the long run, you know. But it's we all have to uh, look at our finances in our own way and uh, see how we want to maintain our finances and be responsible with them or maybe not be responsible with them. That's completely your call. That's your prerogative. Or we all have our own different lives and own different uh, finances and expenses that uh, we must all um, 
take into account of what we what we need, uh, what we don't need, what we want, what we don't want. It's all it's all good, man. It's uh, it's great. Speaking of which, I saw that uh, uh, the, it's not up anymore. But there was uh, there's been a couple times these past months where um, the some of the Kino 4Ks on Amazon have been. I think been, there's been price issues on them because it is uh, it's wild, man. That uh, um, I got the 4K of Cujo for twelve dollars before that went back up in price, and just recently, well, it says order placed on February 27th, so we're now in April. Um, but uh, they had Andrew uh, Andre Tarkovsky's Nostalgia in 4K. Uh, for 15, I mean, it's my total was 15.93, so I think it was like 12 or 13 bucks or something like that. But uh, now it is 25.99, so it must have been a pricing issue there. But I was definitely on that, so hopefully they fulfill that uh, that pre-order on that. I already have that Blu-ray. Um, it might not even be opened honestly, but I uh, wanted to jump on the opportunity to uh, pick this up on 4K if I if I uh, if I had the opportunity and, and I did. So I, I definitely took full advantage of that. Um, and, um, so keep an eye out on that too. Make sure you're talking to, uh, acquaintances about that. I didn't even know about that at first until somebody else pointed it out. And I think sometimes on Blu-rays, on Blu-ray.com, you can see it that way as well. And I think, uh, I also ended up pre-ordering the Vitagraphs or Vitagraph comedies from Kino Classics. Um, I got that for the cheaper price online. I think I paid about 15 bucks or so and now it's up to about 22. So, uh, three is collection featuring Larry Seaman, uh, Edith Story, John Bunny, Frank Daniels, and Mr. and Mrs. Sidney Drew. I'm unfamiliar with um, the the. I think this is a short film collection, to my knowledge. I'm actually a little unfamiliar with it. An acquaintance turned me on to uh, to this release, so uh, I I'm just gonna kind of uh, uh, keep an eye out on that. It's funny enough. I'm actually seeing here as well the Roaring Twenties. On 4K is only twenty three dollars. I wonder if that's intentional or not. You don't typically see uh, uh, 4Ks, let alone from Criterion, being that uh, fairly priced. Uh, I think the 4Ks right now on Kino's website are about eighteen dollars on the sale. So um, you know, I've heard people kind of because uh, before the the 4Ks were cheaper, and uh, people were. I was reading some stuff online. People were upset about the uh, price jump, but then people other people were replying that. Uh, you know, it's about the same, uh, same um, price as uh, like a Criterion. Like Criterion is like twenty five dollars. No one bats an eye, and these are eighteen dollars. Um, are uh, not so much. Um, but I mean, it's all subjective. You know, I, I mean, people can say it, it really depends on the release overall. Sometimes uh, the Criterion releases are solid. Sometimes not. And same thing with Kino. So it's sort of like your prerogative to uh, whether or not you feel it's warranted to spend that money or not. And the uh, the Cameron James Cameron 4Ks came out recently. The True Lies and Aliens and uh, I think the Abyss as well. I don't know if that was part of it. I thought they were talking about that, but maybe not. Uh, let me double check on that. Yes, uh, it was the 4K. Although it says it's unavailable right now on Amazon, so I'm curious about that. There was some major controversy about the restorations on them using. Uh, I don't even fully understand what it was. I had an acquaintance who actually explained it well to me, and I kind of forgot what it was. It was something where they were using AI for some of the restoration, where they were doing like these weird zooms and stuff. Somebody else, somebody smarter than I can break it down online, but I know there was a lot of hesitancy about these releases, and um, with all that time being spent on them, um, that uh, people were, were fairly upset about the releases. But I uh, I don't know. I, I haven't been keeping up any uh, any kind of updates on these. I haven't picked up any of these. I would probably grab True Lies because I don't have that film and probably The Abyss as well. Um, uh, probably wouldn't upgrade uh, Aliens because that, that Alien um, box set on Blu-ray is pretty great as is. Um, I, I think everybody collecting DVDs back in the day had that big Alien Quadrilogy box set. I mean, you look at anybody's collection online, you go on like forums back in like 2005, 2006, um, and everyone had that box set, man. That was like one of the, it was like that one, like the Indiana Jones trilogy on DVD, whether you had it full screen or widescreen. I think a lot of people had the, uh, whichever one was the red box, because there was a red and the white box. And, and um, it's just, I mean, it's a different kind of uh, medium now. I mean, that's the thing is that, you know, from, you know, I've, I've been collecting for, um, gosh, since 2006 was when I bought my first DVD that, um, was when I was like, okay, I want to actually start a collection of this. I'm not just casually buying this. Um, and I remember my first DVD was the film Waiting, 
uh, the Ryan Reynolds comedy, which is actually the first R-rated movie I saw in theaters, coincidentally enough. That was just an unintentional sort of um, uh, coincidence there. But that was the first one where I was fully aware of wanting to build a collection. And then from there, uh, it's just, it's, you know, it's changed so much in the past uh, decade and a half or so. There's so many companies putting out uh, titles. Now. There's so many films being put out. That is great. I mean, it can be overwhelming for definitely, you know, especially trying to keep up with the newest releases and, and trying to... Um, you know, see what is justified for these prices and, and what aren't, of course, like all the stuff with slipcases and stuff like that and steel books and, and um, you know, it's a different kind of medium now, but I think it's also really great that we're getting so many films now. We're getting really great companies doing these beautiful restorations on these films that may have not had the previous, that may have previously not had the best releases or the best transfers or, God forbid, it's a, a censored version or something like that. You know, I was talking with somebody recently, and, it, and the great thing now is that you can buy a film from Synapse or from Vinegar Syndrome or any of these companies uh, for the most part, and you don't have to worry about it being an edited version or a censored version. I mean, the only exception would be, like, the UK stuff, um, because the UK, they can't, uh, like, if you buy any of the Italian cannibal stuff from the UK, they're, they're not allowed to have any of the animal violence um, in those releases. So even recently I saw that uh, Slave of the Cannibal God, a.k.a. Mountain of the Cannibal God, a.k.a. There's another title for it, I forget. But that film has some uh, animal cruelty in it, some real animal cruelty that is going to be cut out. There's also one part in that film that I'm wondering if it's going to be on the release as well, involving a pig. Um, if you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. I won't get into it. But um, I, I'm curious whether or not... Although, I haven't... It's funny. I bought that the Eureka Blu-ray of Wake and Fright because somebody told me it was... Or I may have heard that it was the uncut version because that film as well uh, famously has some uh, real uh, animal cruelty in it. Um and that Draft House Blu-ray is long out of print and expensive. Um, uh, but then there was an Australian Blu-ray, which has the same cover. And then the Eureka Blu-ray, um, which I bought in part because it had the most features. Was the uh, I, I was the I mean I love Eureka as a company, so I haven't I never actually looked at whether or not that was completely uncut or not. I mean, if not, um, I would just buy the Australian Blu-ray because I think that's still in print to my knowledge. But all those. Um, Draft House titles, those are, I think for the most part, those are out of print. Like, I, I, I remember people were talking about, like, the Miss 45 Blu-ray being super out of print. I have that Blu-ray. I bought it for, like, 15 bucks at a convention when it first came out. And that was going for, like, 80, 90 bucks last time I checked it. It may be down now, but I, I'm honestly surprised that Vinegar Syndrome or somebody else hadn't picked up uh, those Draft House titles. I could, I could easily see something like Miss 45 or Wake and Fright getting a an announcement for a 4K at some point, or at least a re-release. Um, because Vinegar, Vinegar Syndrome did put out Miami Connection on 4K, and that was a Draft House release. Um, but I think some of them are still in print. Like, I think I, I bought Dangerous Men for, actually, funny enough, for the same Queens from Finland. Um, I bought that for him, and that was still in print. That was 20 bucks. But actually, from their website, they still, like, that... Um, uh, Life on the Farm and I think even Chop and Steel were both Draft House releases, Blu-ray. So I really don't know. I, I think like maybe Cheap Thrills probably still is in print. I don't know about the FP because they were putting out like a wave of films for like a little while, but it wasn't like a it was like a handful of films, um, and then they just stopped. Um, I don't know what the reasoning was. Uh, at least it stopped in the way where their out, their output kind of halted, and um, it wasn't as much as previously. But that's why I wonder with Vine with um, Miami Connection getting a 4K eventually from Vinegar Syndrome that came out like last year, I think, or two years ago. That I wonder if I wouldn't be surprised if like uh, that like, you know the next like halfway to Black Friday or the uh, Black Friday um, sale that we get something like that. You know, I, I could easily see that or Wake and Fright or, or any of those really. Miss Forty Five probably seems like to be the most. Uh, uh, I could see them putting that one up first because that already has kind of a, a cult um, kind of fan base behind it. And, and plus, you know, they've put out other of Abel Ferrara's films. They put out um, Dangerous Game with uh, Harvey Keitel and Madonna, which uh, I actually have seen that film. I, I When that got announced, I was like, oh, an Abel Ferrara film. I don't, I, I'm not sure about this. And I was looking at it, and I was like, oh, wait, I've seen this film. And it's actually a pretty cool film. I... Um, I, uh, it, it's, it's got, I mean, it's not great or anything like that, it's, but it's, it's, I think it's pretty solid overall. I think the performances between Keitel and Madonna especially are, uh, really solid. I mean, of course, uh, you know, Keitel and Ferrar would do Bad, Bad Lieutenant together, which is getting a 4K from Kino, and, uh, next, I'm really looking forward to grabbing that release. Bad, Bad Lieutenant, um, is a really, really excellent film. That's just, it's just, Harvey Keitel is just so scuzzy in it. It's got, it's got some really uncomfortable sequences in that, but it's so good. And Bad Lieutenant Protocol New Orleans, which, I mean, it's in name only, but Werner Herzog's, um, uh, film, not even a, it's really not even a sequel. It's, it's, 
it's going for a different intentional tone, um, whereas the first Bad Lieutenant is going for a much uglier, more uncomfortable, grittier film uh, with Port of Call New Orleans. I've, I've often heard it put in its category of, like, of, you know, a term I don't like, which is so bad it's good, but the film was very intentional with how over the top it is. I mean, using a, an actor like Cage and with somebody like him who can have this really big bombastic sort of um, personality and have these sequences where he's just just messing with people and he has this whole ridiculous running bit with um, this iguana and stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's intentional, man. And Werner Ver- Herzog's just a, a brilliant filmmaker and I think that that film itself is such a unique and um, enjoyable experience. It's, it's a different kind of film than the first. But um, they also put out early, uh, one of uh, Abel Ferrara's early, early adult films, which was Nine Lives of a Wet Pussy. That was like a couple years ago now. That's not a very good film, but um, it's interesting just purely for contextual sake to watch that and to see. Um, so we'll see, you know. Um, I know I'm kind of going off and, and rambling there, but it's just interesting kind of to see the, the landscape of, of collecting now than it was, uh, you know, many, many, many years ago. But um, in a lot of ways, you know, I still love seeing people's collections. You know, I, I was just uh, talking to an acquaintance recently about collecting and stuff, and I'll go on these binges where I'll either buy, like, a bunch of titles at once or I'll, you know, I won't will buy anything for months. It's like, it's, I, I, I'm not the kind of guy to buy, like, one or two at a time. I'll, I'll like, just splurge and I'll, I'll just spend, you know triple digits on on titles and then i just won't buy anything for months it's not even intentional i just don't I, it's, it's something that's almost like accidental i mean occasionally i'll still buy something and you know um there are definitely titles that are, that are on my mind like i was talking about the uh the goodbye uncle tom 4k i mean the, i'll undoubtedly pre-order that that's you know there's no chance i wouldn't pre-order that um but uh but even still i mean it's, you can only spend so much um each month I, like right now i mean with the vinegar syndrome and uh uh, partner label titles. I mean, there's so much now that there's so much I want to watch and I want to um, check out. But I mean, you know, you can only spend so much X, X amount a month. A lot of those partner label titles, um, the the older films, those all look really cool. I'd like to check them out. Um, the, the, as for the newer titles, it's more kind of like writing those down to, to stream or to you know check out somewhere else. You know, I'm I'm a little more weary on um, purchasing brand new, fi- blind buying new films, new contemporary films. I kind of draw the line after like a maybe like a decade or 15 years or so. I mean, like brand, like, I mean, you know, there's stuff here. I'm looking at like Yellow Veil's putting out like Daniel isn't real, which is a contemporary film. And, um, uh, XYZ films are putting out Hugh Sarah, the bone woman. And, and both are, are, are pretty good films, but I, I have no intention of watching either again. Um, they, I mean, it's, uh, let alone like contemporary documentaries. A lot of those, I really just don't want to purchase. Um, because I'm never going to watch them again. I, 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 I have bought a couple of the contemporary documentaries, but I think it's more because kind of, uh, if it's on sale, it's one thing, but I'm not going to spend a lot of money on these because with the contemporary documentaries, it's kind of, um, it could be kind of hit or miss depending on the editing and the budget of a lot of these. But there are still a lot of really good ones as well. And I was talking about before, I mean, um, you know, I, I had mentioned before, like, Chopping a Steel or, or A Life on the Farm. You know, I didn't buy either of those, but I'm just saying that, uh, like, those I wouldn't purchase uh, unless there was good, like, supplements with them. Like, with A Life on the Farm, I was talking about it. I wish that they included the actual full 30-minute um, tape on there, um, which I can't find anywhere. I haven't been able to find it. Um, but there are some cool stuff as well. I like when uh, Agfa does their um, m- kind of, like, mixtapes. Uh, I've bought a couple of them. They're, they're not totally for me. Um, I bought their drug stories one and I bought the satanic panic one uh the drug stories one I wasn't the biggest fan of like to me it kind of ran out of steam after about 20 minutes um and the clips weren't as interesting and then the satanic panic one I think I liked um but I like with those they also include some films on there because the satanic panic one although I think those are actually the satanic panic was smut without smut and um the drug stories or something else but with the releases they typically include short like other films with them there was like this one I'm blanking on the name, but in the Satanic Panic uh, uh, Blu-ray, there was, like, this adult, like, Satanic film. It was, I mean, it was in really rough shape, but it was interesting. Um, but I also love when they include those. Like, when I, I bought uh, Satanus, um, uh, the documentary uh, from, like, the 80s or whatever that has, like, uh, like Anton LaVeyne, and they had a they had the, uh, uh, an additional film on the disc, Satan's Little Children, which actually got a, an individual release, which is kind of wild that got an individual release. It's not quite... It's like as a as a as a bonus film, it's one thing, but I don't I couldn't see myself spending money on that. It's just it's just not that. Uh, I mean, it's a ridiculous film. It's 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 nonsense. It, it's very low budget. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Let me get a sip of this coffee. 
Mm. Um, what was I going to say? But yeah, no, I, as mentioned with this, the, uh, the hey folks, it's uh, the intermission uh, time video party. It's, it's the intermission time video party. That's what it is. Um, and this looks like a cool release, but actually it sold out pretty quickly. Uh, standard edition as well. Yeah, it sold out. So it's, it's fascinating. I mean, these, these are cool. Um, people always talk about if you're having like a party or something, you, you watch these, have them on in the background. I ain't having parties, man. I got too much to do, but, uh, but you know, it's a place where like, uh, you know, it's a thing where like, if you want to, uh, if you like maybe you own like a pub or something or you own like a, uh, like a coffee store, I don't know. It's just like a public kind of place. You had a TV on. I mean, but these do have a lot of nudity in, in these. So you have to be kind of weary of, you know, um, what you'd be showing, but, uh, but these look just, I mean, this one in particular looks really cool. I, I actually, if it was still in stock, I'd be really uh, considering purchasing it. Um, cause I love these sort of, uh, I love these obscure kind of bumpers and these just weird kind of, um, intermission and, and ads for going to the lobby and, you know, that, that stuff's all great. That's just a more kind of contextual sort of thing than you then something that you watch again and again and again. But, uh, yeah, this looks really cool. I, 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 uh, I imagine that they'll probably do a reprint of this, uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, so sometimes they'll say whether or not they're going to reprint it. Sometimes it's, they don't. Um, this doesn't say anything about it not being reprinted. It just says this listing is for the standard edition Blu-ray. The limited edition slipcover was limited to 1,000 units and sold out. The two versions are identical aside from the slipcover. Uh, I don't see anything else. Um, uh, featuring Hey Folks, it's the Intermission Time Mixtape. An exclusive feature-length mixtape from the AGFA team, as well as all six volumes of the original uncut Something Weird VHS releases from the 1990s. This two-disc collection serves as a mind-altering time machine to a beloved era in home video history. Interesting. I, I'm uh, glad they're they're re-putting out all those Something Weird titles. I know that results may vary in terms of quality, but it's great what they're doing. I know they put out uh, a bunch of those collections before, like the Mad Monster Party and stuff, and... Um, and stuff. I, I wonder, was, was, I don't think Monsters Crash the Pajama Party was a something weird DVD, but I think I heard somebody mention that recently. I, I don't think it has a Blu-ray or anything like that. Um, but yeah, no, I love all that stuff. I love all the stuff they're putting out. Uh, something weird just back in the day where it's just, I mean, I, I, I knew just, I mean, I, I, there's so many films I didn't see, but I just knew like all those covers, man. They, those were just so memorable. I remember, uh, you know, a local video store back in the day, they had like, uh, like most of the big Herschel Gordon Lewis, um, something weird title. So all those covers are so memorable. The Wizard of Gore and the, the Gore Gore Girls and uh, Blood Feast, 2000 Maniacs. Uh, it's just, you know, those are just so, uh, those have been printed on my brain so much, and, and it's just so cool. And also other companies are putting them out as well. Uh, one of my favorite discoveries like the past like five years or so has been uh, Toys Are Not For Children, which was originally a something weird title to my knowledge um, that Arrow Video put out on Blu-ray. And uh, it's, I, I'm glad that that got an Arrow Blu-ray because I think by putting it with a something weird title, I think people might be expecting something schlockier. And I thought that was just a, it's not even really a horror film. It's really more of just like a kind of a psychological drama. I mean, if you can, I, I think people may group that into something that it's not because of the low budget of some of the uh, questionable acting and, and stuff. But I think it's actually, a, it's one of my favorite things I've watched, you know, in recent memory. I think it's just such a excellent, uh, dark, um, really cool, just uh, look into uh, uh, this girl who's, who's, I don't want to get too much in it. Maybe I'll talk about that actually another time because that's a film that I could easily uh, uh, go more in depth on. And it's actually an interesting story with the uh, filmmaker on that. Uh, but some of these documentaries as well, I'm looking at like the, they had the one about the Sega, I think it's just about the, not the Genesis, but like the company of Sega. And they had the, the Tony Hawk one, the video game one. Like those are cool, the Golden one. Those look cool, but I would never pick any of those up. Those are one and dones. Uh, they have a bunch of like documentaries. Yeah, this is it. Slopes Game Room, Sega, The Complete History. That's cool. That's cool. I really like what they're doing. Uh, and adjust your tracking, which I have seen before. Um, and actually, I never even talked about, speaking of the Agfa, I never talked about this, the Terminal Degeneration, the films of John Mor Mor Moritsugu collection. Um, I've only watched two of the films in that set, and it's already like one of my favorite things that I own. I watched the first film, uh, Scum Rock, which was okay. I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but the one that I really loved was Terminal USA from 1993. That one's like 40 minutes or so, but I loved that film. Um, 
I, I knew about this filmmaker for a while because Mod Fuck Explosion uh, from 1994 was one that I always heard about. I didn't know what, what it was, but then when I saw that they put out this collection, um, I was definitely on this man, like white on rice. Although I don't don't think I picked it up even the first month. I mean, I picked it up like the second month. So maybe I wasn't that eager. But it's got a bunch of films. It's got My Degeneration, um, Hippie Porn, Terminal USA, Mod Fuck Explosion, Fame Horror, Scum Rock, and Pig Death Machine. Uh, I compared um, specifically Terminal USA to uh, like a Greg Iraqi film in a way. Um, specifically, uh, his film Nowhere really reminded me a lot. And I guess uh, the Doom Generation to an extent, but that film, Terminal USA, reminded me a lot of those films. But I like, I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of. Uh, either of those films. I mean, to me, my favorite Gregor Racky film is undoubtedly Mysterious Skin, um, but but I think it's a different kind of film for him because it's a little less... It, it makes more of just a uh, really great character drama. Um, and, you know, I, I and I enjoy Nowhere and the Doom Generation enough, but they're maybe a little bit too big for me, um, which is ironic because in Terminal USA... Uh, reminded me of that, but it didn't quite... I was able to get with this more. Maybe it's because it was 40 minutes. I don't know, but it, it reminded me a lot of, of that in that you have these young adults who, I mean, they're, they're all really... They're really playing it up. There's like this There's like this air of, of almost like eroticism in a way where everybody's like really like uh, uh, touching each other and like really into each other and stuff. It's, and, you know, um, like it, it's... Uh, I can't even totally explain it. I think if you watched Nowhere and then you watched this film... It, you know, I didn't write any notes or anything like that, but I, I just the set design as well. You have these really like um, these really specific like like colors that you see, like like from a set that doesn't feel like like they're not going outside and just kind of like rogue feeling. It all feels like sets and stuff. Not that nowhere does, but nowhere as well. A lot of the architecture in that film it feels very specific. Like the scene and like all the scenes like the main guys um, like bedroom and stuff. And early on when they go to like this cafe and um, it just feels like. It doesn't feel like they just walked in replacement film. That it all feels very set up, and, and that's great. But um, yeah, perhaps I'll talk about Toys and Not for Children um, next time. Maybe I'll actually even talk about Terminal USA next time. I don't know. Um, I didn't mean to ramble on with this about collecting, but because um, I actually had some films I would like to like to have talked about. But there's always next time. Uh, well, actually, there isn't always next time. No, there's no guarantee for next time. So that's why they gotta really kind of seize the day and really kind of live in the moment, man. Not be worried about, you know, things that may or may not happen. You just got to worry about what's, you know, what's happening right now. And if you, you got all your fingers and toes, you got your health, you got something to eat, something to drink, then we're all good, man. And if you don't have those, then, well, you got to find a way to get those. But I guess if you don't have your fingers, it might be kind of tricky to get those. Uh, but either way, uh, that's all I got for here. Um, let's see. Yeah, beautiful day outside. Yeah, we're getting into that spring kind of weather. We're getting into the spring mentality. Stay focused on your art, on your dreams. Don't get distracted by outer nonsense. People are going to want to try and drag you to do things you don't want to do, to be in situations you don't want to be in. you got to say, forget all that nonsense. I'm, I'm living my dreams, man. I'm making my dreams come true. And if you don't want to, that's your prerogative. But I ain't you, man. But, yeah, just thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, until next time.